Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're gonna to be talking about the ID4 Motion Cluster and showing you all the things it can do and all the things it can't do, which a lot of people fail to tell you in the videos, including the company. Now, the BMW E60 was released in 2003. Bearing in mind, when this car first came out, this was technically like what the Tesla is today. Nobody actually understood it. But as the years went on, technology advanced, people got the hang of these cars and how they worked, and therefore people worked out that the technology on this car was so far ahead of its time that you could actually adapt it to newer features what are being fitted to BMW models as of today. And people have become passionate about the BMW E60 and E90. When it was first released, nobody liked it, but as the years went on, more and more people decided to fall in love with it and end up buying this particular model. Bearing in mind a lot of people did actually buy this car, that led to an increase of the used car market for the E60 and E90s going up and a lot more demand, which then meant companies were trying to develop more ways to keep the E60 refreshed and still looking as good as new to keep it more modern and up to date with the later BMW models. So therefore, we did have ID4 Motion, and if you didn't know, I actually installed the MBT clone retrofit in my E60 also. But today, we're gonna to be talking about the ID4 Motion, how it works, and all the flaws in this device that I have found out, and which a lot of people don't tell you, because this isn't important to some people, but I know the majority of you that do watch this channel, these flaws are gonna be very, very important to a lot of you, and can hinder whether you purchase it or actually don't purchase it, because a lot of you do not wanna lose the certain OEM features and the ability to do certain things by putting this cluster in your car. Now this doesn't just apply to the E60, this also applies to the E90 and all the E70 range as well and this will be affected on all of them models. So let's get on to this video. So as I said, where the E60 was way ahead of its time, the electronics on this car was so far ahead also. Now when you look at the F-Series, many of you didn't see my F-Series videos, you've got a voltage control unit. Now the voltage control unit was basically the newer version of the micro power module that BMW developed inside the E60s. Now when you look at the rear fuse box, BMW have now called that on the F-Series the REM module, which is the rear electronics module. And that is positioned in the rear of the car behind the covers, as you would have seen on one of my videos on the F-Series also. Where the E60 was so way advanced, they've used all that technology to bring it forward to the newer F and G series. Now, bearing in mind this car was way ahead of its time, I'm very excited to see what other companies are gonna develop for this car to bring it more up today. Like I said, they invented the ID4 motion cluster, they invented this MBT retrofit, which is absolutely brilliant. HD screen looks better than the genuine one that comes in the car, obviously. And therefore, you've managed to add the ability to an E60, which people didn't think was possible. Not only does that help uh, bring the car up to a more modern look, that also is what will keep the E60s and E90s price range up in years to come because you can adapt all these new technology to these cars which you can to the older models and as technology grows obviously companies are going to look for other ways to bring the new technology from f and g series to the older e series models because a lot of people are big enthusiasts about this car so let's get on to the id4 motion review and i'm going to explain to you what the flaws are with this and what it can and can't do Okay guys, so as you'll see right here, this is the ID4 Motion cluster that I've actually got installed to my BMW E60. Now, many of you are big fans of this and when it came out, there was a lot of talk about how this was gonna change the game for the E60, E90s and the E-Series cars to be able to have a digital gauge. Now, this technology actually come from BMW and if you look in the F30s and the F10s, from 2014 upwards, there was a 6WB cluster which looked exactly like this. The only difference was it would be an orange display and you can actually change it for different modes, for sport mode and obviously 
for your driving characteristics depending on what you wanted. Now you couldn't change all the skins to like the needle ones, it would can't always be just like this in digital format. Now it was a good feature that BMW actually bang out because the world is going digital, bearing in mind Tesla have done it and a lot of companies have done it and obviously someone wanted to make the E60 and E90 and bring them to a more modern look and by doing this they've actually done it but obviously there is its flaws in it as I said and there is its pluses on it. So I'm going to talk about obviously the flaws as many of you are going to want to know why this product is actually flawed. So the first thing about it is when you get the cluster it's not going to match your service records if you have an iDrive system like this so it'll be CCC, CIC or mask. Now many people in E60 do have that. You have to change everything in here to match it with your CCC. You can no longer use ISTA to change all your service schedule and what I mean by your service schedule is if we go into info sources right here you'll see there's the service screen. Now when you first get it all your stuff right here will be a red triangle and you're going to need to actually adapt that. Now usually you would need ISTA or IMPAR to reset your CBS because obviously when you take the old cluster away from the CCC they're all linked together so it will lose all the service data that was on the old combi. So you then need to pull it into this new cluster for it to sync with obviously the CCC itself. Now if you see here it is all in kilometers. Now you can't actually change that, I have tried, it won't let you try it. Now before obviously we did this change it was all in miles on the original combi but for some reason ID4 Motion haven't rectified that to be able to let it show in miles everything and all the settings are set in miles but this just doesn't want to show it on the service data. Now to get into that when you first get this screen you're going to want to press down here on the BC button. Now the BC button will show just like that and once you're in there you will just go with a check control button and keep going down until you see maintenance. When you see maintenance, you'll press the BC button. And if you can see there, you've got oil level. Now, the good thing about this cluster, which is really, really good, is if I just press right here, the BC, you can see the oil level, which is at the max or minimum, and it shows you the actual correct oil level on the car, on the cluster, without having to go into the CCC. Now, to get out of that, you'll just press check or BC. Now, to go down to reminders, you'll just click check and then you'll click BC there. Now, if you can see, it's got legal inspection, car service, brake fluid, brake pads front, brake pad rear, and the motor oil. Now, you have to set these on here to make the red triangles on your iDrive go away, or you will have the red triangles. Now, if any of them are red, I will explain another flaw with this if you don't change them. Now the reason the company made it like this, that you have to do it like that, was purely because a lot of people on the 90s and so on don't have the CCC. But for E60, they always, always come with either mask, CCC or CIC. Now you have to be able to reset the service schedule. Now obviously when E60 was released and the 90s, a lot of people hated this, that it would remind them to change their oil and to, to remind them to change their pads or this or that. But as the years progressed, as these cars touch more and more enthusiasts, people learned to actually like that and got actually used to it. Now, bearing in mind a lot of people have got used to it, that's why a lot of people are gonna look to see if this is there. Regardless of what many seem to believe, even a company, when I messaged them about this, they said to me, a lot of people don't like that, but I assure you, majority of people do rely on it and do check it. It's just become habit where people have been so used to resetting the engine oil after they do it to stop all the lights to get their full green. Especially when selling a car also, all this is important because a lot of people will check that because that is important. And even if someone is looking to buy a car, this will be the one of the things that people tell you to actually check, especially online and everywhere else. Now in the cluster itself, like I said, you can choose 
all your service schedule. So we'll just go down to maintenance. And if you see reminders, we're going to legal inspection. You can set the actual date. So I've set it to 2030 because I do the inspections all myself on these cars. You've got the car service and you can set the date here. So I've set that as well to 2030 because mine's always fully serviced. And you've just got to change all the date. Now you can increase and decrease it based on what you want. And after you've done that, you will get the green okay on the CCC. Before you do that, you will have red triangles in it. Now, another flaw on this device after testing was the fact that this does not display combi in ISTA. When you load up ISTA, it shows combi, no communication fault. That is purely because it's not on the PT CAN, which links on with the DME, EGS, and everything else. And it's causing a lot of issues where the system doesn't recognize this cluster. Now, a lot of people are gonna say that's not an issue because you don't really need to test it. But if you ever wanted to program an E60 and you've got this cluster in, especially with ISTA-P because the E-Series use ISTA-P, you won't be able to program the car because it's missing that one important part to the car. This is why I said to you when I installed it to make sure you keep your original cluster and sell it with the car. Because if someone wants to update the car or something does need programming, they will need to program the whole car Vista P. If you don't have the original cluster, it will not allow you to program because it doesn't recognize this cluster and it can't even write the programming or code into it. Now that brings me to my next one. When you go to coding, especially with NCS Expert, you cannot code anything on the combi. This does not have a coding file used for NCS Expert, therefore you will not be able to code it. Everything in here is software related to ID4 motion and anything you need, you must go through them. You cannot just go ahead and code what you want on and off. Same as a seatbelt reminder, um, it doesn't give you an option to turn that on and off. Obviously the gong doesn't sound. I haven't actually tested if this one actually even has the gong, which I believe it doesn't, which isn't a good thing because what will happen is if you do get a uh, powertrain message or reduced power or any kind of fault all you're going to see is the writing come under here and you won't have any kind of sound even alerting you to what's happened with the car so if it overheats or anything you won't get a gong sound if you can see right down here though i do have the temperature gauge which is underneath the rpm you can see it right there and you can customize that to your liking a lot of people are saying it doesn't have engine temp, coolant temp, battery voltage, but I can assure you it has all of them. Now to get into all of them, you just wanna press the BC button and you just wanna go down. So you just wanna go down here and you can do indicators. So if you do the center display, you can see there you've got the time and temp date. You've got the board computer, so you can set your fuel economy, fuel range, every speed in the VMAX. You've got your digital readouts, which is obviously whatever you want it to be. So obviously I've got it like that. You've got your optional gauge. If you can see here, you've got consumption. You've got coolant temp, which I've got it on oil temp, and you've also got battery voltage. You can set them to whatever you actually want. You've also got torque and power here. So you can have it in kilowatts or HP, depending on what you want. You've got your shift indicator, so you can customize how many lights come on in the middle here on the car when you're shifting and so on in there. So it's really up to you if you want to have that on. Mostly that's for M cars. You've got a lot of different functions in this cluster, which a lot of people don't tell you. In the appearance side, you've got a lot of different themes. You've also got your night mode, your M Sport logo, your startup, and obviously your, your race skin as well. Now, if we go into themes and we go into default, you can see here, we've got this skin. Now, if we just change that one to there, classic carbon, and we just select that, we can go to classic pristine, we can go to modern analog. And if you can see right there in the blue, that's the digital speedo that sits inside the actual needle speedo as well. If you can see here as well, we've got modern carbon. We've got the modern pristine. We've also got the classic orange. We've got classic green, classic blue, classic white, modern orange, modern green, modern blue, modern white and you've got bright Austin which is yellow this is how it usually looks on an F30 you can actually have the skin you've also got bright azure which is blue 
You've also got Bright Blaze, which is orange. It's another F30 look. Bright Devil. Bright Mamba. Bright Oxide, which is the one I basically got. You've got Fierce Austin, which if you can see there, is actually better colouring for the actual char. You can see everything a lot better, especially your fuel gauge, which is obviously digital as well. You've also got Fierce Azure. You've got Fierce Blaze. Fierce Devil. Fierce Mamba. And you've got Fierce Oxide. So if you can see there, you've actually got a lot of different skins for it. And you've also got, which I'll just go right here and show you, you've also got the race skin. Now, if we press that, you can see there, we've now got the race skin right there. Now, if we just rev up the car, you can see right there, it actually comes up like a graph. Now, many of you would see this on like McLarens or the S2000s. Um, a lot of them have this kind of digital um, kind of, you know, speedometer and it looks really, really good. Now, it's not something I've used as of yet, but it does look really, really nice. And if you can see there, it does tell you all your battery voltage and all your coolant temp as well in there. So you get a good understanding of everything in on your car. Now, it's all up to you what skin you choose to use. Everyone's got their own preference. I choose to use the more digital one because that's what I like to be. To get out of it, it's very, very simple. You just wanna look what one you can want. And if you can see here, you can change all the color on this as well to whatever you want. You just wanna go back and you just wanna get out of here. So you just switch the race skin. And if you can see there, you're now back out of here. And to just switch it back to what I had it on, just go to themes, default, and you can just change it to whatever you want. So you can change it to digital, um, which I'm gonna put it back on digital. But you get an idea of how this actually works and the bonuses of it. Um, it all depends on basically you, what you want to have. Like I said, I do prefer the digital one. So now we've got my display back. So you get an idea that you can see basically everything on this. Now there is one thing I must actually say on this. When using a cruise control, if you do choose to use the cruise control on this um, cluster, you'll see red lines show up both here and here in the middle, which means your cruise control is active. On your original combi, you can actually see the speed in the center right here or on the middle part of what speed you're doing and you can adjust it. Now, I haven't tried it on any of the other skins, but I haven't seen it actually come up in the middle and I will be doing further tests on it. But bearing in mind, I've got the heads up display. The heads up display still works perfectly fine, even with this cluster and I get to see everything on my heads up display. So it's not an issue for me. But for many of you that don't have that, it could actually cause an issue. But bearing in mind, it is a very, very simple unit to actually use. And, you know, there isn't much to actually change on it. It doesn't take a brain scientist to work it all out. You get your cluster brightness, which you can increase or decrease if you really wanted to. So if we increase the brightness, you can see there it's really bright now. And if we go to the interior, we can then increase the interior brightness as well. And you know you can have it even on auto brightness, which is it, which is on, which goes on by your headlights. It knows by night or day. So there's many different things you can actually do in here. Like I say, you've got all your indicators. That's your shift indicator, obviously your coolant, your battery voltage, and so on and so on. But above all, the cluster is a brilliant piece of kit. But it does have them flaws, which are very very crucial. If you buy a car with this cluster, do ask the person if they have the original one. Because if not, and you do want to program the car or something goes wrong with your car and the car has to be fully programmed, it is going to look for that cluster and that is going to cause a major, major issue. Okay guys, so as you would have seen there, I've now shown you the ID4 Motion cluster and why I believe it still has its flaws even still today. Now, the company does need to rectify this issue to make the cluster fully adapted for the E60 and E90. Because it's unfair to say that you're going to spend 800 euros to a thousand pound without the tax to get this cluster shipped to you to then find out if something goes wrong in your car, you need to program it and you can't do it with this cluster installed and you will need to actually use your old cluster. Now, as I said, their flaws are still there 
And obviously, regarding the M button, everyone knows the M button doesn't show up on here as yet. So if you've got an M5 or M3, it's gonna to be totally useless for you because all it will do is just show the traction control light, but no M button or nothing displayed on the cluster. Now, ID4 Motion have assured me they are trying to find a workaround for that to get that fully adapted so the cluster is fully integrated with every single car on the market, including the M3 and the M5s. But for now, it just hasn't been possible and therefore they haven't actually done anything to rectify that issue. Bearing in mind this product's been out over two years now and they still haven't found a cure to the M button and why the M button doesn't display on the cluster when it's actually pressed. But that all being said, it is a really good device and brilliant product and brilliant upgrade for your car. But as I said, the flaws are the gong, which I haven't checked, but I don't think it makes the gong sound because the gong on the E60s and E90s comes from the cluster, which is built into the back of the Combi. The next one is the Cruise, which I don't know if it actually shows, but I believe, it, I know it shows on my heads up display, but I'm not sure if I change the skin, if it will actually show the cruise control. The third one will be it can't use Ista P with this cluster. So if you want to program your car and you want to use Ista P because not everyone knows how to use Wink FP, you won't be able to actually do it. You'll have to revert to your old combi system. So do make sure you keep that intact. Fourthly, it is expensive and therefore a lot of people cannot afford it. I think it's very, very expensive for what it is. But then saying that I understand why they've done it because a lot of people do talk negatively about this product and if it was cheap then they're the type of people that would go ahead and buy it the only reason they knock it is because it's too expensive for them to actually afford but i can assure you now if the price went down you'd see every single e60 and e90 worldwide with this fitted and that's purely why they won't lower the price because obviously they want it to attract the more enthusiastic people the people that actually care about their cars now Obviously, I care about my cars. Would I have spent a thousand pound on this and health? No, I wouldn't this. I would rather put that into replacing every part under the hood. But realistically, they sent it to me, so I'm very happy with it. I've got every skin for it, but do not be fooled by sellers that sell this and don't know what they're talking about. As I said, it's the P is important especially if you change anything on your car or any of the garages do they see this has been changed and they can't program the car your car won't be programmed and all they'll end up doing is probably destroying the other modules on the car or bricking them because it can't make communication to the combi so i hope this video actually clears up a lot of issues guys thank you very much for watching this bmw dr dean here and goodbye